Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Po, and today I'm doing a wrap up of my March 2021 monthly priority, which was Middle Eastern and Indian heritage. If you're not familiar with my monthly priorities, I have a video about it and a playlist, which I will link below. Basically, what I'm going to do today is talk about the books that I read in March that were written by authors who have Middle Eastern or Indian heritage, talk about some of the themes that I saw, as well as recommend a couple of my favorites. Um, March was a little bit of a weird reading month for me in that I just really struggled to read anything that was actually on my TBR, kind of in a little bit of a reading slump right now. So I am going to include some of the books that I paused and DNF'd just because I didn't manage to finish that many um, actual books in March, and that gives me a little bit more in terms of what I want to talk about for themes. So first, let's talk about the books that I finished in March, and there are content warnings for all of these books in the description box below if you're interested. The only book that I finished that was actually on my TBR was Realm of Ash by Tasha Suri, which I adore. Adored. I was so, so glad that I read this book. It was just such an absolute highlight, not just of my month or my year, but really of the decade. I adored this book. I actually have done a series review of this book and the book that came before it in the duology, The Empire of Sand. So I will link that review of the Books of Ahma below. I really loved this series, so I definitely recommend that. This book follows Arwa, who is um, a woman that is growing up in an Amhan empire, uh, which is based on Mughal India, and she is a widow. Um, she's widowed very, very young, and that means that she's kind of lost her place in society. She doesn't know what her value is anymore to society, but she is able to help the empire by offering up some services based on her bloodline. So she is part Ampen, but also her mother was of the Amwiti people who are a desert nomad tribe with a lot of magic, but very much persecuted in the empire. So she has to really find her place and navigate a lot of those complexities of being part Ampen and part Amriti. I loved so much of this book. The magic was fantastic. There's a romance in it that was so sweet. I loved the discussion discussions of politics and empire. It was just fantastic. So I definitely love this book. Next, moving on to some books that I finished that weren't on my TBR, beginning with Beyond the Gender Binary by Alok Vayin Minnan. This is a very, very small book that is by the Penguin Pocket Change Collective. So it's a series of little books that are very much about social justice. And in this, um, Vaid Manon really talks about what the gender binary is and why that isn't sufficient and why so many people are outside of that binary. Uh, it does a lot in terms of addressing many of the common things that are said about the gender binary and how to refute those. It talks about uh, Vaid Manon's own life. It just was a really well-written kind of intro to the topic. Then I finished two other books, which were Persepolis and Persepolis II by Marjane Satrapi. These are graphic memoirs of Satrapi's experiences as a child and then as a teenager and young adult um, growing up in Iran in a time when there was a lot of social change because of the sort of Islamic fundamentalists who took control of her government, um, and then also her experiences traveling internationally to go live in Vienna for a few years before coming back to Iran. So there is a ton in both of these books about really her experiences with these very, very tumultuous times. Um, the first book focuses a lot on what was going on in Iran in terms of all of the social changes. And the second book really focuses more on her personal experiences, especially dealing with um, depression as she was isolated from her family when she lived in Vienna and when she came back, really not feeling like she could fit in anymore. Uh, I loved the first book. I thought that all of that exploration of the politics was fantastic from a child's lens. The second book was a lot more about depression and, and really her angst as being a teenager and those sorts of things, which didn't work as much for me, but I think for other people it could work as well. Then I did pause two books where I started reading them, but I just didn't get through them and I had to return them to the library. The first was The Map of Salt and Stars by Zain Jogadar. This is a really beautifully written story of a girl in around 2011 who is Syrian-American but ends up moving back to Syria with her family 
right as civil war erupts. Um, it also has a dual timeline. It follows in the past the story of a girl in, I believe, the 13th century who wants to become a map maker and travels around the Mediterranean with a master map maker and kind of her journey as well. I thought this was really beautifully written, but I didn't get very far into it, so I don't have a ton to say other than I want to eventually finish this book. The other book that I paused was Celestial Bodies by Joka Alharthi, translated by Marilyn Booth. This is a historical fiction about three women in Oman um, in the 1960s and the decades after, kind of following them as Oman goes through a lot of social changes. Uh, I also didn't get that far into this one, but it was really, really fascinating learning about the women and the culture and all of the expectations of them. It is very much a literary type of historical fiction. It's got a stream of consciousness feel to it. So there's a lot to learn and unpack from this and I'm interested, but I didn't get that far into it. Then moving on to the books that I DNF'd, starting with Cracking India by Babsi Sidwa. This is another historical fiction. This one's set in the 1940s in India during the partition of India and Pakistan, which was a very difficult, very bloody uh, partition that had basically civil war happen. Um, this is told from the perspective of a 10 year old Parsi girl, which is a religious minority who has polio and just her experiences. Um, all of this is own voices for the author, but this is a fictionalized account. This is a story that has a lot of really interesting things going on in terms of exploring the political views and the way that a lot of people weren't really sure what was going to happen and how it all went kind of crazy and downhill as the partition happened. Um, I really liked all of those politics, but the story itself was very, very graphic really, really graphic. So if you're interested in this one, definitely check out the content warnings in the description box below. Um, it was a little bit too much for me, but I did think the politics and what happened were very interesting. Another book I DNF'd was Song of a Captive Bird by Jasmine Darsnick. This is another historical fiction, which is um, a fictionalized account of an Iranian poet who lived in the 1950s, 60s, and was very famous for uh, not conforming to society's expectations. She was very much a free spirit who did tons of things that were not considered okay um, by the social mores of the time. Um, this is a book that I didn't get that far into, mainly just the childhood of the main character. I think that it was interesting in terms of what was going on in Iran at that time, but it was very melodramatic and the fictionalization was very heavy, which was very strange for me reading about um, um, somebody who actually is a real historical figure, but in such a fictionalized account, it was a little strange. And lastly, I DNF'd Big Bad Wolf by Suleika Snyder, which is a contemporary paranormal romance. Um, it is really interesting in terms of a lot of the politics that are discussed in this. Um, it is about a world that is basically our own, except that a few years ago, uh, basically it came out that paranormal creatures existed, supernatural, so werewolves and vampires and sorcerers and such things. Um, and it is a little bit of a dystopian in that it takes everything that happened with the 2016 election and brings it even more extreme. And so there's not just um, a lot of issues with anti-trans legislation and um, things like uh, persecution of Muslim people, but also a lot of regulations and rules and laws being made against supernatural people. And so it's examining a lot of that in an urban fantasy paranormal romance type of world where there's mafia and there's all sorts of lots of interactions between the police and criminals and these sorts of things. The main two characters, one is a lawyer and she is uh, falling for a client who is in jail. Um, he's a supernatural werewolf who has ended up killing many different mafia people. So this book has a lot of cool stuff going for it in terms of politics and themes, but it is very very gritty, uh, way too graphic for me, and uh, just a little bit too much in terms of um, how violent and gritty and graphic it is. Okay, so those were all of the books that I read and attempted to read this month. Now let me talk about some of the themes that I noticed, starting with really the effect of war, especially civil war on children. This was very much a theme in many of these different books. So. In The Map of Salt and Stars, you have 
uh, a girl who is Syrian American but goes back to Syria right before the Syrian civil war starts. And although I didn't get very far in the story, you could start to see things happening like the price of food skyrocketing and just the uncertainty and um, the girl not being allowed to go outside because fear of there being riots, those sorts of things. Uh, also in Cracking India, that's very much a story about huge amounts of civil war happening uh, for a little girl and her perspective on it, her seeing all of this violence and the way that it, it impacts her and kind of the trauma that she internalizes. In Persepolis, this is another one where it's civil war and then war itself um, from the perspective of a young child and dealing with having her world change so much. So watching friends be killed in bomb attacks, these sorts of things. So a lot of these stories had this theme of young children uh, experiencing civil war and war and what that does to them and the trauma that it inflicts. Another related theme is that of displacement, of being pushed outside of what you know in your home and forced to live somewhere else. So in Realm of Ash, we have a woman, Arwa, who is a widow, um, and she's had this life that up until this point, she's known exactly what she's supposed to do. She ex understands what's going on, but when her husband dies, she is displaced and she is no longer seen as needed in society. She's seen as more of a ghost. And so she loses everything that she's known and has to find a new way to find a place in society. In the map of Salt and Stars, the story actually starts with a Syrian American girl who goes back to Syria. And so she's grown up in the US. And when she goes back to Syria, she doesn't know Syria. She doesn't speak the language very well. She doesn't know how to fit in. And as the story progresses, I think also there will be displacement because of the civil war, which I didn't quite get to. Um, in Persepolis, it's interesting because because of the civil war um, the the author Satrapi was asked to leave Iran by her family to go to someplace safer so they sent her to Vienna but that in itself was very much a trauma because she was separated from her family and just so isolated and alone so that idea of displacement was really big in a lot of these stories and the last thing I wanted to talk about was that of gender roles and nonconformity, which was in quite a few of these. So in Song for a Captive Bird, we're looking at a very famous Iranian poet who just would not accept what her role in society was and refused to play by the rules. So that was really interesting. In Realm of Ash, Arwa, who is a widow and considered somebody who cannot contribute to society anymore, is trying to find a way to find purpose and value and see that she does still have something to contribute, even though as a woman without a husband anymore, she's not seen as meaningful or important. And in Beyond the Gender Binary, the whole point is looking at gender roles and nonconformity. And I really loved the messages in this book and how it talked about the ways that we're asked to conform to certain expectations of our gender and why it's important to not conform and to allow a lot more freedom of expression and being. Okay, so now I wanna go ahead and recommend my three favorites from this month that I think are worth picking up, starting with Beyond the Gender Binary by Alok Vain Manon, which I just think is, like I said, such a great example of a nonfiction book that provides a lot of insight into a different experience and really gives you tools to understand some of the discussions that are going on about gender and gender nonconformity. I would also very much recommend the first Persepolis book by Marjane Satrapi, which I think was so good in terms of understanding the experience of civil war and war and what it is like for a young girl going through such huge social uh, and political changes. I think it's very interesting to see it from a child's perspective. And this is great in terms of understanding the history of what happened in Iran in the 1970s and 80s and 90s. And lastly, I would definitely recommend Realm of Ash by Tasha Suri, which I think is just such an excellent, slow, epic fantasy that has wonderful world building and magic inspired by Mughal India. It's very feminist. It has lovely slow burn romance. I just thoroughly enjoy this book and would definitely recommend that you pick it up. 
Okay, so that wraps up my March monthly priority. If you guys have read any of these books or if you have any thoughts on them, if you have anything you want to read, if you have any recommendations for me of other books by Middle Eastern or Indian heritage authors, I'd love to hear them. Just go ahead and leave me a comment down below.